The Gibraltar is a tier 10 cruiser, named after a place where the British Empire gets to watch Mediterranean people minding their business. You fucking colonizer! Under the guise of controlling naval traffic, which unsurprisingly makes it one of the hottest place during World War II, although it is currently contested by the rest of European Union. But unlike Gibraltar in real life, there is nothing hot about Gibraltar in the game we all know and love, with the only thing it has in common being constantly under pressure by the Italians, and we'll get there eventually. This is because it doesn't have HE, means it cannot set fire, unlike its bigger siblings, which know a thing or two about dealing as much collateral damage as humanly possible. People like to joke about AP being the superior ammunition of choice as it rewards marksmanship, but that joke is coping mechanism by itself, and you're betting 59,000 research points to prove absolutely nothing. So what makes the AP so special? It is basically Minotaur AP, if it lives in Northern Britain, bigger and heavier than ever, so it gets the ability to overmatch 16mm of armor on top of improved auto bounce and shorter fuse, a direct counter against super light cruisers including the Minotaur itself, like it was specifically made exactly for this purpose. But the main reason why Gibraltar was made, is giving correction to destroyers, not like the game had any shortages of competent ships for that purpose. I guess destroyers truly are the oppressed class. You really put that knife in me chest, innit, bruv? One shell is enough to do upwards of 2000 damage, so 12 of them is probably enough to put you in jail. You only need one good aim to completely disable a destroyer. Dealing maximum emotional impact, as you remove huge chunk of their HP, though killing is preferable. Thankfully the fast reload makes follow up shot possible within reasonable time. While it doesn't win any DPM award, the short fuse and improved auto bounce makes it the most consistent AP only ship in the game. A well placed shot can net you over 10,000 damage, and even superstructure hits can be painful but you can just angle and make it useless. You're missing the point, because angling against AP means compromising your otherwise ideal position. The advantage of having only one available shell type is not having to deal with an extra layer of complication, such as thoughts of switching to AG, but potentially missing out a juicy broadside. Without thinking about HE, you can focus on finding every opportunity to expose broadsides. You didn't fancy just kicking some German ass? <laughs> So, if you ever want to know how I got all these paid actors, listen very carefully. You have two ways to play. First is to take aggressive positions, like camping on these spots with your bow pointing forward, cosplaying as an American when dealing with the smallest threat ever. You prevent anyone to push that flank. You can do this because two thirds of the firepower is in the front, and it throws eight shells instead of the usual six found on many cruisers with similar caliber and reload. This is also what made the Moin really good in general, at least for those not watching my older guide, camping without losing much of anything. Double the bonus for not being seen as border humping pussies. But this only works if the enemy didn't manage to push. If they did, well you better find a French to take the blame. You probably aware that it happened because the enemy team can't hit you, so they would rather farm your scrodina teammates instead. Which is why the second option is often a better pick. That is being further out from the map, but not further back, not to be confused with sniping. This way the moment you're spotted, the enemy will show their broadside, and focus on you, because you are not a French bread flying at 50 knots. You then juke with your rudder, I prefer using steering gears mod too, so you'll spend less time showing broadside. This is because of its massive freaking waste of space called the British Parliament, and it doesn't have spaced armor, again this is Minotaur from Yorkshire. Showing broadside is simply asking for decolonization. As Law of Equivalent Exchange said, if you can easily stab destroyers, then you deserve to be easily stabbed back. By the way, it does not have the improved repair party, at least it still has armor to negate damage. But remember to angle, not to show the complete stern, because there is nothing in the back to stop laser guided German precision. Once you found a spot where you can keep on shooting, you create pollution, be sure you are not blocking your team's vision. 
you shoot whoever shows the most broadside, and then get spotted, because of its high smoke shooting penalty. Fortunately Wargaming have thought of this, and provides the Gibraltar, the same acceleration found on the Minotaur, so you can get away quickly, and you any incoming shells, you may have left the smoke, but at least you now know where the destroyers are. Claiming either a patch of water, or an occupied island, is your only reliable way to do damage, and increase your sphere of influence, just like the Empire. But regardless of which camping style you prefer, there is one thing you must remember. Avoid friendly battleships as far as possible, or any ship that shoots AP most of the time, and create crossfire of your own. Due to how unpopular the Gibraltar is, people won't realize their mistake until you slap them for 10,000 damage, and this first shot is your chance to turn games to your favor. Remember that AP damage is meaningful damage, require more thoughts to make it work, and vastly superior in the long run. Stay afloat, but do not snipe, and don't do anything stupid, such as dive bombing ships that can ignore your armor, especially against German ships made for people with dementia. You will die without them actually looking at you, courtesy of computers that does the aiming. Reminder that this game is very non-discriminate. This also applies to every other battleship it faces. It is an issue, because the Gibraltar is so fucking massive it probably generates its own gravity to attract shells. Once you build up confidence, you follow friendly destroyers, literally follow them everywhere, and hold your fire for enemy destroyer, you help them chop their heads off, so your team can actually push, one good salvo, makes all the difference, and reminder that you can smoke up and get away, once enemy destroyer are dead, you can advance, keeping your bow forward, and check if your team reads your body language. This is probably the only cruiser that performs better when it only face other cruisers, since most of them require showing broadside to shoot all their guns. You use this as your advantage, with your superior frontal firepower, and the improved auto bounce, to outwit even the newest hot thing. If you do all that correctly, the only weakness it has is when people rushes you and you fail to kill them in time. It doesn't have torpedoes to deter suicide bombers. Speaking of torpedoes, don't forget that at such range, you are one big torpedo bait. This is how you become a professional stabist. You take grease the gears, consumables enhancement, superintendent, and concealment, then take heavy AP, top grade gunner, adrenaline rush, and consumable specialist. For the upgrades you take main armament 1, engine room protection, aiming system, steering gears mod 1 and 2, and main battery 2. The Gibraltar follows the British and their ingenious design. Mismashing gimmicks hoping to satisfy a new niche. Until you realize that those gimmicks doesn't actually matter, because a better Gibraltar already exists, and it is unfortunately Italian. You lose the flexibility and consistency, and forced into this stupid gameplay concept of farming damage from cover, and unlike the Minotaur, you cannot trade it for radar. All the clips of me clapping destroyers are mostly stupid people failing to notice a British invasion force barreling their way, and this doesn't make the ship any special, because there are better ships solely for that purpose, if only it gets access to radar, it already establishes itself as a British the one, kinda. So, if you want to spend resources to get the Gibraltar, you better be certain that you really like stabbing destroyers, likes to play unpopular ships, clearly hates Italians, and need another British cruiser to queue when your Minotaur explodes early in the game. But I digress, the game already has so many gimmicks, that anything new or old, good or bad, balanced or broken, have a chance to work one way or the other. The finest form of entropy, made possible by once again the lack of competition. 
thank you for coming to another episode of why this game still exist. I once again wish you good luck on dealing with all the never-ending bullshits you suffer in game.